Shane's in Fulham. Shane, reasons to be cheerful. Hello, mate. Um, I apologise for not being a female. You could um, have pretended. <laughs> Listen, yeah, we, we do we do have reasons to be cheerful. Um, and uh, the, I wanted to call in to tell you about the back in the, the days of apartheid in, in my country. The, uh, the world decided to cut us off. Um, and we had uh, no one wanted to trade with us. They wanted us to, to punish the country, but instead of punishing us, it actually gave the country the chance to boost the economy. Local businesses took off like crazy. It's not always international trade and these globalists are not always good for the, for, for, for the economy of the country. Um, I think this will now give local businesses a chance to pick up and to boost the economy. Um, there's more how, reasons how, to be how? cheerful. There's a lot of reasons to be cheerful. There's yeah, don't just keep saying that. Tell me how. Now, now we know how desperate they are to fish in our waters. We can use this as a bargaining chip. We can say to them... But the whole referendum was, was fought on, on them fishing in our water. It was, all, it was all they had. But go on, we'll use that as a bargaining chip. We'll say what? We'll say, you fish in our waters and we'll take our borders back. Because at the moment, the borders are our number one priority. Mate, you, were telling me about an in. you were telling me about how we'd have an economic recovery that was locally sourced, and now, now you're talking about borders. Well, we so we tell me about the improvements reasons. to our local economy using sanctions era South Africa as our guide. Crikey, I thought the American Australian parallel was eccentric, but okay. So what what can we learn from sanctions era well, apartheid I'm South taking, Africa? I'm just taking lessons from history. We so, well, I'm taking lessons from you. So so how 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 will our economy improve as a result of of leaving the European Union, which is what you just told me would happen. Well, if they if if they don't want to trade, if if certain corporations, if multinationals don't want to trade with us, and we have the the, the local means of of production, then we can we can supply and and we and, and can we, can we, we put can some flesh on this bone? I mean, the kind of thing you're thinking of. The, the, I, mean, I mean, bearing in mind multinationals, you mean companies rather than countries, but if they decide it's less attractive to to trade here or to to manufacture here than it would be in the world's largest single market, we can plug that gap and replace those jobs by doing what? By manufacturing for us, by, by, by self-sustaining. Just on, only using stuff that, that we don't have to import? Exactly. So what sort of manufacturers do you have in mind, Shane? Well, Br Britain's full of good talent. Well, I, I, yes, uh, that's an interesting selection of, of, of words, but it, none of them answer the question I asked. What, what kind of manufacturing do you envision us being able to lead the world at without importing anything and that we're not currently doing? So we, we don't, we don't, we're not manufacturing anything? Manufacturers... No, 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 the, the, no, no, the, no. the stuff that we're currently doing is irrelevant to your vision. Your vision is of the stuff we're not currently doing, but big multinational companies are that we'll be able to do on a local basis without importing anything. I'm just, just wondering what... what you had in mind. Well, uh, well, I don't know, James, but I'm well, need to give one. you reasons to be um, ch to to be cheerful. Yeah, we we're getting our laws back, we're getting our borders back. Well, but we always we had our laws, our and we we back. always had our borders, and we always no, had we our. Never. Well, no, okay, we never. okay. We, we, well, we, as I said, I'm not going to have old hackneyed arguments about empty slogans today. I'm talking specifically about the economic impact of this political decision, which you say will have positives, and I am very politely pointing out that so far you've been unable to name a single one. Might not, James. It might not, James, but it might do. I can't tell the future, and neither can you, but I don't think there's any reason to be pessimistic here. I think it's... Well, hang on. It's, it's, Theresa May it's, it's, and Donald Tusk have both said that the economic impact will be negative. The government's own modelling has, in some areas, four times the negative impact of the last recession, largely in the poor areas that voted leave. So I appreciate that economic impact assessments aren't crystal balls by any stretch of the imagination, but your reason to be cheerful is that we will be able to replace what is currently done on the international stage with local manufacturing and I was just hoping you'd say something like bicycles well James I did say what well, I did say to you that Britain's full of talent and I don't I might not need to name them individually but there's a lot of talent in Britain there's a no, lot this is it and, and of course not only bicycles the, the point you miss of course is that 
You're supposed to be explaining to me how leaving the European Union would increase the amount of talent in Britain. Well, James, I'm just trying to tell you that there, there are there are reasons to be cheerful. It's not I haven't heard one yet, doing. Shane, and I've, I promise you, I've been listening really closely. Well, we were well. South Africa was cut off from the rest of the world, and the economy boomed. It, well, so unfortunately, it, history suggests the that the economy didn't boom. Well, but anyway, all right, I'll take that. So, so the reason to be cheerful is that if we're lucky, we'll be like apartheid-era South Africa while it was suffering from international sanctions. That, that's our sunny upland. Not at all, not at all. That's I, exactly I, what you said. Not, I, I, that's not what I said at all. What okay, what do you think you said? Being, being protectionist can sometimes uh, be an advantage to the economy. And, and which leading British politician has suggested that we should be protectionist as opposed to outward looking and doing more trade with the rest of the world? Well, leaving the, leaving the EU is certainly a protectionist move. But all, the people, all the people that have promoted it have said it will free us up to do more trade with other countries. You heard the Conservative MP talking about Australia a minute ago, closer to your home country than it is to mine. So just to recap, and, and I'm, 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 as I said, no arguments, no shouting today. You think that we should look at apartheid-era South Africa as a reason to be optimistic about leaving the European Union, and you think that we can replace a lot of what is currently done on the international manufacturing stage in this country with locally sourced manufacturing, but at the moment, and I appreciate it's a pressured environment when you ring a radio station, at the moment you can't think of a single example of what kind of sector that might involve. Well, all the doom and gloom is not always, it doesn't always turn out so bad. Protectionism can sometimes have advantages for the economy. I don't have a crystal ball. Yeah, now, now, now you're just repeating yourself. So we'll agree that that's what you've said. Look, look to apartheid era South Africa as a shining example of what we could hope for in our, in our best case scenarios. And we'll be okay because of manufacturing, although I can't think of a single example of what we might manufacture more effectively than we currently could. Learn lessons from history. Not, yes. Not so, in history, can you think from history of an example of anyone ever signing a free trade agreement that reduces the amount of free trade they can do with their co-signatories? Well, as it stands right now, we're taking the borders back. We're taking our laws but, but, but now you're just being a parody of a, of a, of a sort of Brexit halfwit. You're just saying gonna, words. We don't, know, we don't know what's going to happen with the economy. We can. We yeah, can but, but mate, the question was not. The question was simple. You said learn lessons from history, so I asked you to refer me to a free trade agreement signed by signatories who would be free to do less trade than before. I know, James. I'm not a politician. I'm just. You're not a politician. You're not a historian. You can't see the future. You can't answer any of my questions. But you think that we should look to apartheid era South Africa? Just high five, Shane. Seriously. <laughs>